Um, she's going to talk to us about what um, Donating Blood has done for her. Everybody, my name is Deborah Power, and I'm from Niagara Wind Power. And I'm your guest speaker today. And what I'd like to talk about is I want you to all kind of try to close your eyes and, and, and picture this. It's a stormy November night, and it's up in Timmins, Ontario. That's uh, up near Georgian Bay. It's very, very cold up there. It's a small town of about 5,000 people. That's about one-fifth the size of Grimsby. And there's a girl with long hair, right, sitting on her hair, and she's been in the hospital for a month. This was her new life. She was told that there was no hope. Absolutely zero. They don't pull any punches. They don't tell you any lies. They say there is no cure for leukemia. None. There are no survivors prior to you. None. No survivors. Well, she was bound that she had to live in this hospital and get this torture every day. And that was her new life. From being an active grade 12 happy girl to this life. So what could she do? What could she do in this horrible situation? I'll tell you what I did. I made the best of it. Every day, she had spinal tap, bone marrow extraction, multiple IVs. That was me back in 71. I put a smile on my face. I got through every day. I was just got through everything. And after me, there's a 14-year gap where there are no survivors. So at this point in time, I am the longest living leukemia survivor on the planet. And I did it with a positive mental attitude, and I did it with blood donation. With leukemia, you have, you have no white cells to fight off infection. So the slightest little, the slightest little germ you come in contact with can take over your whole system. And that's why it was important to get blood donations, because your fresh blood has white cells in it that help people like me fight off infection that they get from anyone. Blood has only a five-day shelf life. Once you donate your blood, it's a five-day shelf life and it gets used very quickly because all of the hospitals need it. If we don't have the need for it right now, it goes somewhere that does very, very quickly. Blood is so unique. There is no artificial blood. It is absolutely unique to human beings. You are the only people that can produce blood. So what you have in you is totally, totally um, unmakeable. Like you, you can't, um, where I'm looking for, simulate blood. It's totally unique. My uh, nephew, Rob, he was like this, the next Wayne Gretzky. He was a superstar hockey player out in Belleville. All the scouts were looking at him because he was, he was so amazing. Well, he got sick. He, he wasn't feeling good, but he didn't tell his mother, who was a nurse, my cousin, because he figured if he told his mother that he didn't feel good, she'd make him quit hockey or not go to practice or whatever, so he didn't tell her. And what happened, when he started finally peeing blood, he had to tell her what was wrong. And by the time they took him to the hospital, his liver was totally destroyed. He had hepatitis, and it totally destroyed his liver. He was 14 years old. And he had such a bright future. He was in the hospital, and I was there with my cousin that night. He had about six hours to live, and he was history. He was gone. And then a liver came all the way from British Columbia. It was an accident. Someone died. They donated their liver. They flew it all the way to Toronto Sick Kids, and he got his liver at midnight that night. That's how close he came. A liver transplant takes about 100 units of blood. Not only did that one person make that wonderful sacrifice, but a hundred other people saved his life during that surgery. The other thing is white blood cells and red blood cells, plasma, and there's also platelets. Platelets are the things that stop you from bleeding. If you get cut or, or you're out in the football field and you get hurt, all the platelets in your body rush to that site and they make that wound close so that you don't bleed to death. So you can take platelets out of a bag of blood as well and help it for someone who doesn't have enough of their own. And you guys are all in grade 12 now. You, you, you are our future blood donors. Every year we need 85,000 new blood donors to keep up the banks that we need. That's, that's a lot of new donors. Because after you're uh, in your 70s, you, you can't really donate anymore. So all those baby boomers are all getting up in their 60s and 70s. They can't donate. So now we depend on, on your generation to come through and donate this blood for us. 
Has it saved me, my brother, my nephew? It saved lots of people in my family. So we all thank our blood donors from the depths of our soul because I wouldn't be here talking to you now if nothing like the blood donor clinic was in place back in the 70s. So thank you very, very much. The eligibility criteria, basically like photo ID when you come in. So if you have a driver's license or health card, uh, it'd be fantastic to bring it in with you. You have to be at least 17 to donate. And let's see, you have to weigh at least 110 pounds. You have to be feeling well. Also, if you are coming, make sure you eat, uh, eat your breakfast. All right, eat your breakfast, it's important. And make sure you get a good night's sleep before. Um, and that's about it. During the